Hello everyone, this is George Diaz, president and founder of Larry Jacob Internet Marketing, and I'm bringing you another episode of Defining Infusionsoft Success. Today we have the smiling Jess Hoffman. How are you, Jess? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? Jess is just a bundle of smile and joy and happiness most of the time. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I've, um, I've been following Jess for a little while on Facebook. And recently, she really got onto the Facebook Live bandwagon with a 12-day challenge. And it uh, led me to reach out to her because we're going to be talking about spirituality and the entrepreneur. And I thought she'd be like the perfect person to join me for this topic. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. And I love owning my own business and I love Jesus. So it's a great topic to have me on. <laughs> great, great. And I'm, you know, I'm spiritual. This is not typically what I cover on this program. But what I do know is that the more I've progressed in my business and I'm on year three plus of, you know, I want to say flying without the um, training wheels because a couple mm -hmm. years before that I was running my business but still had income coming from my employer. And yeah. the transition is a big one, especially when it gets into worry. Um, you don't have a paycheck coming in every two weeks uh, or twice mm -hmm. a month, you know, however it is. So you're basically dependent upon yourself, your business generating uh, business, and there comes, you know, the rub. So what are the things that we can do um, as Christians, us, but also, you know, other people, depending upon what your background is, to kind of level it out mentally, right? Because you can go totally bonkers and become a very obnoxious person. My wife ends up hating me and things like that. Mm -hmm. If I don't figure <laughs> out a way to stay balanced, centered, um, you know, and aligned with who I really want to be versus this obnoxious person that's grumpy all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a great point. I actually was doing a live today. Um, and one of the, one of the, guest that was watching it said, I often just lose and forget who my identity is. So coming from a spiritual Christian standpoint, um, one of the things that I have to do is I have to just be engrossed in God's word and I have to be reminded of who I am in Christ and whose I am. And just remembering that it doesn't matter if my sales page is a flop. It doesn't matter if my product only sells five copies instead of 20 copies like I had hoped. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I am firmly rooted in my identity as a child of the king, as a daughter of the king, and that helps keep me um, centered and focused in the right area. Yeah, now, and now, now let me catch you here because... Yeah. It doesn't matter relative to who you are. It matters relative to I got to pay the power bill and my rent this <laughs> month. Right. So, I mean, I, yes. I, I want to make sure I mean, clearly you're not just going, hey, it's okay, sera, sera, naively thinking oh, the correct. world is just going to spin. Right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a that's a great point. That's where I was actually going to head next is. Um, so a little bit of background. I used to have a job within corporate America where I had a steady paycheck and a couple of years ago I was let go with a few thousand other people. So it was nothing personal. Yeah, and, and, and since by then, the way, we have similar backgrounds. I was in corporate America, you know, the whole thing. And then, yeah, lo and behold, you're Oops. no longer necessary. Yes, exactly. And it was such a gift. I'm so glad that I'm at where I am. Um, but when that transition occurred, I looked at my husband and I said, we need to make some big life changes because I am I really want to figure out how to be my own business owner and I really don't want to go back to corporate. It was a great experience. It's just not for me, not for my personality. And so I have taken on very odd end jobs here and there. You know, I nanny, I work at the Mall of America in retail. God bless that because I never thought I would be in you know, retail ever again. Um, and then the other thing that has been extremely impactful and I know is um, from God, it's a very humbling experience, is we budget everything now. We are completely aware of where we're spending our dollars and cents. And, you know, if we are going over budget somewhere, like in our groceries, we're pulling from a different area. Um, and in the couple of years that I've been trying to figure this out, we've just had to make it a point to become fully aware of where we are spending because I'm very excited to say, you know, we've never had a late payment on our bills, on our student loans, you know, we've had, we've been able to keep our life insurance policies up to bucks. So, nice. um, you know, it's just being aware and 
does that mean it's never stressful? Absolutely not. Right. It's been very stressful. Um, but while we are aware, um, as, a, as a Christian, I also have faith and strong belief that God says he'll provide our daily bread. I believe that one way or another we're going to be, you know, getting oh, our bills okay. paid on time. Yeah, and, you, you know, uh, we were sharing before we started as we were kind of prepping for this is that I, uh, about this time last year, so about 13 months ago, I mm -hmm. was, you know, year two of my business and I go, this is not why I went into business. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it seemed like all I did was work. Um, coming up for air was something you did like, you know, once in a blue moon. Oh. It almost seemed like you were underwater yeah. 10 feet most of the time. And then every once in a while you got to breathe. And, yes. you know, it made me a very difficult person to hang out with inside. Everything seemed to be churning. And I go, I've got to do something different. And, yep. you know, you mentioned getting into the word and, you know, prayer and that kind of thing is key. For me, what I did is I got much more involved in specific church ministries. Um, oh. Specifically, um, you know, we have a, a, a very strong men's group, but we also have a, a prison ministry that mm -hmm. I started volunteering. Ooh. And it's almost like I purposely threw myself into something that yes. wasn't something I would do. And, you know, my, my natural response was, I don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, I don't not oh. have time for this and God's going to have to help me, but I've got to get my wits about myself, get my head out of my business and yep. do something for the world. And you know what? It's actually <clears throat> helped my productivity. Yes, absolutely. And I totally agree with that. So I'm not, um, I, something that I've really realized in the last month is a um, little bit of background. I had depression and PTSD. By miracle, I was healed from it back in September. Um, but what I've so realized this is, since... This is very recent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I was diagnosed with depression and PTSD close to three and a half, four years ago. But this has all changed um, since September. So just a few weeks before you and I met in real life, actually, George. Oh, wow. So very okay. cool. Yeah. And... Um, and what I've realized since then is, and it, it doesn't even have to be depression, it doesn't even have to be a mental illness, but sometimes when we're so engrossed with things, like our business, it's, it should be a, it is a positive thing, but we become so focused that we turn everything inward and we stop looking up and we stop looking out. And I think when that happens, we just lose all, like, logic in a way like we lose our happiness we lose our joy we start comparing um, and so I think what you said like going out and volunteering and being involved is so incredible like we my husband and I just started a house group with some people from different churches around the area um, and we just meet every other Friday should I spend that time working on my business instead probably but would I give it up absolutely not because it gives us a chance to go and commune with other people. Like God created us for relationships. So if we just sit in our tiny little offices all day, we'll go crazy. And especially when you're a solopreneur. I mean, I, I, yes. have a team, I run a team where there's six of us. But the other five oh. are in Asia. So I, oh. work, mm -hmm. you know, I work here out of the house. And it's basically yep. in my computer. And I mean, I could literally sit there 12, 14 hours a day if I allowed myself. Uh, yep. get out of shape. I mean, I gained weight, you know, just all those, those things. And I go, I just can't do this. And I'm, you're just a little bit younger than I am. Um, when you get to be my age, you're almost like, okay, am I more likely to get a heart attack now? Strokes, you know, all those other diabetics right. sort of issues, uh, which is, yep. is something else that's thrown on top of us as entrepreneurs. Yes. And I think, um, you know, even though I might be a little bit younger than you, um, because of all the things I had going on mentally, I was constantly in a fight or flight situation. And um, in the back of our, in our backs, we have something called adrenals and our adrenals pump our energy. Um, and your adrenals are what help you in an, in an intense situation, right? Your adrenaline. Um, and if you are constantly going in fight or flight, your body can never come down and get that adrenal back. It, it can't reproduce energy if you are constantly, you know, way stressed way up here. And so with all this stuff going on, I completely wiped out my adrenals. Like 1 p.m. every day, I would be sound asleep. I would need a nap. Oh, okay. I could so, not So function. you were just physically yeah. exhausted. Physically exhausted. So even though I was 28 at this 
time I started seeing a health coach and she could run some tests and we found out that I was testing at the age of anywhere between a 46 and a 52 year old when I was 29 years old. By the way, um, that, so, doesn't, that doesn't sound as old as you might think, but I get you. You don't want to be that no, age at 29. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ex exactly. Especially when even though I was only 29, I was feeling like I was like 109, right? Um, yeah. Just so sluggish and very... Blah, and I, I couldn't be productive and so um, it took a lot of working on my mental game it took a lot of you need to get up and you need to do this stuff anyway and I completely changed every part of my diet and I completely changed my mindset you know I wake up I have a routine and included in my morning routine is you know reading for business I read 20, 20 plus minutes a day something business that's going to help my brain. It's going to teach me how to be better. It's going to teach me how to keep moving forward. And those, um, those were hard changes, but they were, they're very intentional. Every day still, they're very intentional. And it made a world of difference. So, Yeah, and then um, you, know, you were mentioning about you know, being in the Word and stuff. I started, and this is something I started several months back, I do what I call a walking rosary. Now, I'm Catholic. That's part of my, you know, religious upbringing. Yep. And it's yep. a very meditative thing. So, I mean, for me to go outside. Now, I live in Florida, too, by the way. We don't have to worry about these <laughs> blizzards like you have in Minneapolis. Blizzards like us Minnesotans do. Right. But, I mean, I'll, I'll go out and, you know, I start my day very early. So, I'll be up at 5 in the morning and I'll be walking. Um, usually takes about 15, 20 minutes. And mm -hmm. I'll walk. We mm -hmm. have kind of like a, some open green spaces. And it's just so peaceful, quiet. Uh, I mean, sometimes I have to put on a sweatshirt because maybe it's a little cold by my standards. <laughs> like 55? <But>, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 55 would be a blizzard here, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but it centers me. So, and, and I, you know, yes. interestingly enough, I'll start like maybe, I mean, because I've got time changes with customers all over the, the planet. And yep. uh, so if I'll start at four and maybe I'll take a break at six and do that. And it's amazing. I'll come back and I'll be refreshed. And so, you know, and you know, the old me was thinking, well, that's going to kill 20 minutes that you could have used to do something that you needed to do. Uh, yeah. But I'll come back and I'll come up with creative ideas. Yes. Uh, definitely refreshed. Um, and and the other thing too is my wife. Uh, she she works out of the house too. So this is an interesting household. And, oh But yeah. she works in the afternoon, so we have breakfast in the morning together. It was something as a you know in corporate I could never do. Um, yeah. You know, so I, I built that in there because, you know, I tell you what, if I didn't have her and my relationship with her, this whole thing would be totally pointless. Yes. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, I, um, so the other thing that I do, I don't, I, I'm not Catholic, so I don't do a rosary and yeah, it's no, no. going to be 12 feet, 12 inches of snow on Friday. So I'm not about to walk outside. But the other thing I recently started incorporating into my routine is holy yoga. It's, I just do it on YouTube. I, I, it's about Tell me what minutes. that is because you mentioned it in one of the YouTube, the, one of the, the live recordings. That yeah. You so it's so simple. It's just yoga except for, um, I'm just making a note that I want to touch back on something for you. Ah, my light fell. By, by the Sorry way, about the, that. Your, your lighting is fine without it. You're good. Okay, cool. We'll just keep yeah, yeah. that off. So, um, holy yoga is regular yoga, except for instead of being like um, centered on the earth and, and things like that, it's just centered on scripture. Yeah, so, so, it's, so um, you're not getting into the chakras and, and that kind of thing, right? Yes, correct. Yep. So, um, you know, it'll be s s like focused on the intention will be on scripture instead of something like a chakra, right? right. So, um, it's, it's just centered on God's word instead. And that's something that um, I prefer mm -hmm. over regular yoga because it, same as you, you go and walk, it gets your creative juices flowing. I will be doing, um, you know, this holy yoga and she'll reference a scripture or she'll reference a, a, a poem written by a oh, Christian cause, author. Because you'll do like a recording or something, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Sorry, you, it's you. on YouTube. It's just a recording that I, I watch. Um, and it will it will stir up something in me so then I can go on and do these lives. And a lot of the time, the Facebook lives I'm doing, the um, the subject matter, the content is originally coming from this holy yoga. I'm not like breaking copy copyright or anything. No, no, it's no, just, no. That's no, where no, the idea that's where is got, coming that, from. That's where you kind of simmered the, the ideas. I get you. Yes. 
Yep, exactly. And um, as for just the relationship with my spouse, so I've been married for about four years. So God bless him. We got married, and about four months later, I was diagnosed with all that mental stuff. So he is a trooper. I love him dearly. And um, when when I first started on this journey, same as you, was like, well, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. My husband still works outside of the home. Our goal is to get him home as well. Um, but we last in, in December, just about two and a half months ago, we decided to intentionally start planning date nights. So every day or every week we have one day that nothing changes what like anything that comes up is not a, yeah, as it's a, important. It's an, so, it's an appointment on your calendar. Exactly. So it's every Thursday. Um, I'm in a mastermind and our days are changing. So tonight is our first night is our date night being on a Wednesday, but nothing gets in the way of that. Um, and it's it's just a great time because I, you know, I'll have things I want to talk about through the week and he's busy and I'm busy and I can write a note and I can make it a point to talk about it on date night and it's not rushed. And most importantly, it's not distracted um, hmm. because that time fills my cup, you know, it keeps our relationship strong and centered on the right things like Christ and our love for each other instead of who's running where next. Well, so and, and let me tell you, it, it, it's great. I mean, you're, you're a little bit older than my oldest daughter. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, and we, my wife and I just celebrated 32 years. It's, think, yeah, it's thinking like yours that, you know, I mean, it was interesting because we've had these years that are great and we've had some years that have been not so great at all. Yeah. And if you don't have that foundation and then you throw entrepreneurship on top of it, it you are just so doomed to fail. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I have a, we don't have any kids and I have friends that are like, well, when are you going to have kids? And I'm like, when we have a good stable like schedule going and everybody's like you're never ready for kids yes but you can be responsible for when you choose to have them and you know we just I really it's important that my mental health was better my physical health was sure. better and that our relationship health was better before we decided to well we haven't decided yet but when we decide to have kids you know because that is that will never my business will never be more important than my marriage yeah. Or my faith, because they'll fail without it. Yeah. And then, you know, interestingly enough, I've, you know, now that I, I attend many more business seminars, presentations, mm -hmm. you know, and I've got a coach, it's interesting how many coaches or programs will recommend something like, let's say, journaling. Oh. And, uh, you know, I've got a sales coach, and he, how many people did their journaling? And, it's, and honestly, I'm not journaling now. But going back mm -hmm. a year, part of what I did was I started a daily journal, and it ended up being a blog, which I'll release. Um, if, you know, it's one of those high priority, low priority things. I got to do it. But yeah, I done absolutely. It yet. But it's 49. It, it's the 49 day. Uh, what have I called it? The 49 day regain your sanity challenge, and it's awesome. something where you know covers things like worry, um, relationships. Uh, you know, significance, your purpose in mm. life. And it came out of 50 plus days of journaling that I did last year, um, yeah. which I just did. I go, look, even if I, even if what I write is a piece of junk, it doesn't matter because it's my <laughs> journal. But as I look yes. at it, it ended up, you know, and I had to polish it up. Um, it ended mm -hmm. up being something I want to share with other entrepreneurs because again, you get so sucked into your business that everything else can fall apart. Yeah, exactly. And um, the, the whole reason that this whole Facebook Live challenging thing started was because um, I have an incredible mentor, Nicole Walters, and back in November she challenged me and our, our mastermind group to go spend 30 minutes a day in your business no matter what for 30 days. And I decided that I was going to use that time to pray over my business and when I started praying I started journaling like rapidly journaling journaling and so a lot of it is it's right in this notebook right here I, I still have it I still reference things that I wrote and that then led into like instead of writing and journaling I started turning my my Facebook lives into my journal right so instead of writing I would just speak out what I was thinking and feeling and processing and um, it was incredible it it um not only did I learn about a lot about myself, it got me really comfortable with that part of my business. And when you pray over your business, things start moving and shaking and, and going in the direction that you would um, 
love them to, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, and you know, it's interesting you say that. I um, I started this business, and the first project, I mean, it wasn't a business at the time, was a blog. Mm -hmm. It's called CareerJockey.org, and it was for it was part of a faith-based organization I was a part of that helped people that were looking for work. Oh, um, and, good. And, I mean, if you go to CareerJockey.org, it's still out there. And that led to people saying, hey, that's a nice website. Can you build me one? You know, so um, that started yes. that way. And then another time I was, I wanted to do um, a kind of like a synopsis or an overview of Sunday readings. You know, the church calendar, the Catholics and yeah. the Lutherans have a yep. set set up. And so I would take those and I would comment on them. I mean, again, I, I was yep. raised in church and I've been youth group, you know, I mean, yep. and I go, I got a couple of cents. And it was actually, um, it was either called my two cents or, you know, my thoughts on the, the Sunday scriptures or something. And yep. I had to learn, how do you do a podcast? How do you do video? How do you talk without having 600 ums and, mm -hmm. you know, and as a result, I've actually done a lot of video, and that was a great precursor to even like exercises like this. How do you get in front of a camera and not look like a moron? <laughs> uh, so, and, and, and I tell you what, I bet you you've looked at some of your first lives and gone, oh, man, that's not nearly as good as I liked. And, you know, you learn, right? Because you, you learn by doing right. Yeah, I actually, I haven't quite looked back yet because my first lives were just a couple of months ago. Um, but it's funny, you and I were talking, if anybody sees this, that watches me on Facebook Live, you'll notice I look very different because you, you I'm actually ready. You, and you haven't just done holy yoga and, you know. Right. I haven't just done my morning routine. I actually got ready for this. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of nervous to watch my first videos because I always tell people, like, in two or three years when I have a PR person, they're going to be like, what were you doing? Why did you look like that? But you know what? I just... I don't care. I know well, it's not perfect. And I know it could improve. And that's the purpose. Yeah. Of it. But, but, but I got out there and faith and did it, right? Yeah. And, and so. I, will, I will tell you, um, you know, a lot of, you know, the, the groups that we hang out with because we, you know, we do online marketing, talk yeah. about your brand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the corporate world is keep your personal size, you know, separate and whatever. But people do business yeah. with people they know, like, and trust. Yes. And I can't not be my Catholic, you know, church ministry self in yep. my business. And I have no reason to. And some people, yep. well, that's going to turn people away. I go, well, it's probably going to turn people away. I don't want to be doing business with maybe. Um, Absolutely. And uh, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, that's that Jess lady. She's the one that does those yoga things in the morning. <laughs> Yep. Yep. And that's so funny. I was just telling people that on my broadcast this morning when I first started business a couple of years ago. Um, I, I love photography as well. I thought I was going to be doing oh, something in photography. Yeah, for my business. And uh, it's on hold now because priorities. Yeah. Um, and I was meeting with somebody in, that's in marketing and I said, you know, I really want to incorporate my faith in this business. And they're like, I don't really know, you know, and then I would try a different, my hand in a different part of a business that I would create, and, and people would be like, well, I don't know about, about Jesus, you know, and, and I tried to keep that out, and then when I did that 30-day challenge, God was kind of like, have you met yourself? Like, <laughs> yeah, how can you, you not? cannot do this without me. First of all, you what, can't stop talking what, you're, about you're, me. You would be inauthentic, unauthentic. And, Absolutely, absolutely. And even though I have crazy hair and pajamas on in the morning, I've learned that I don't care because that's me. That's when I have time to do my broadcast. That's me just straight up telling you what Jesus was speaking to me that morning, what was given to me in prayer, how my devotional moved me. And that's what matters to me because that is the authentic version of me. And that's what I want my business to be founded on. I'm just like you. If people don't like me because of my faith, then you can keep moving. God bless yeah. you, and I hope you find the mentor that fits your bill. Because if I'm not it, that's cool. Yeah. Somebody else will come along. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and I've seen, um, you know, like I I've, I've follow over the years, I've followed Oprah. And if mm. you look mm -hmm. at where she's gone, now I'm, I'm not totally cool on, I'm, well, not cool, but I'm not in agreement with a lot of her spiritual recommendations. But Correct. she went yep. hardcore following Eckhart Tolle and the power of now and the new earth, yes. both of which I've yep. read. And by the way, were really good ways to really expand your spiritual thinking. But it's like yep. she's wearing her spirituality on her, you know, on her cuff. I don't see any reason yep. why I can't. And so that's here's an example of 
I want to say, non-Christian focused spirituality hitting mainstreams and nobody complaining about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I completely agree. And, you know, I, um, I, I think of that all the time. And, and I think, you know, when I hear things like that, I mean, let's be real. Oprah's influence is like something I can only dream of accomplishing someday. But because yeah, of her like, like how about the two thousand the two thousand and eight presidential elections talk about it, well, it yeah exactly you know and and so my thought is then it's my job it's even more important that I step out there boldly and fiercely in my faith which points to the one true God so that people aren't you know because I think that modern day spirituality is very confusing and when we have people influencing the world like her we as Christians who are maybe not in agreement with that, really need to be bold and step out and speak of God as we know him in his word. So I, I agree. Yeah, I definitely agree. Cool. Well, Jess, this has been fun. And we have gone way over on the time that I typically stop at. But this, <laughs> I did not want to stop this one. I really appreciate right, you, uh, cool. you joining me for this. I will definitely, um, I, I like yesterday I was on your Facebook Live live. Today I yep. got bits and pieces of it after the fact, but I'll keep following you because you've got some interesting thinking going on in there. Cool. Thank you so much. And thank you again for allowing me to be a guest. It's quite an honor. It's my first one. As you know, it's my first podcast interview, so I really appreciate it. Cool, cool. And then um, if people want to reach you, how can they find you? Yep, they can find me um, on Facebook at Jess Hoffman um, dash J Hoffman Creatives, or you can go right to my site at www.jhoffmancreatives.com. Uh, George will link it in there because I don't want you to mess yeah. up the uh, spelling, yeah, the spelling, but you can take it a look. Uh, take a look, and when you get there, there'll be a link um, to Temple Body. It's my my most current product, and you can read more about it on my sales page. So. Okay. Well, hey, yeah. you have a great day, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Thanks. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Bye-bye.